Okay, so I'm doing another alternative sightseeing trip around London. This time by push bike. As everyone knows, there isn't a safer or more relaxing way to get around the city. And here we are at Admiralty Arch, which is in fact a large office building in between the Mall and Trafalgar Square. Just here on this inside wall is an easily missable feature, a small protrusion of a human nose. No one's really sure why the nose is there, however my favourite story is that it's modelled on Napoleon's large beak, and it's to be irritatingly rubbed by royal soldiers every time they pass through the arch. I've spared no expense on this graphic demonstration. I'm now entering the Royal College of Surgeons, off Lincoln's Inn Fields, close to Holborn Tube Station. If you have a squeamish disposition, probably best to look away now. This is the Hunterian Museum. It contains a collection of anatomical specimens assembled by the 18th century surgeon John Hunter. Here you'll find pickled feet, Charles Babbage's brain, the skeleton of a 7 foot 7 giant, a replacement nose, one that fell off due to syphilis, and two skulls fused together. While it's tempting to idly wander around being alternatively repulsed and intrigued by the contents of the display cabinets, this museum really rewards a more careful inspection. Many of the specimens have an unusual story to tell, either about the history of medicine in London or about John Hunter himself. Recently refurbished, it has served as inspiration to surgeons, scientists and artists for over 200 years now. We're outside Crofton Park Station in South East London and that's the unassuming exterior of the Rivoli Ballroom. As you enter the ballroom it's like stepping back in time. It's a wonderland of plush velvet, Austrian crystal chandeliers and oversized Chinese lanterns. It now plays host to rock and roll, jive and swing bands. Dress codes, retro glamour. The Rivoli started life as a picture house in 1913 and was converted into a ballroom in 1957. Its period atmosphere and beautifully quirky decor has formed the backdrop to countless films, photo shoots and music videos. It's an amazing venue with a friendly atmosphere and definitely worth a visit. Just across from Marble Arch and inside Hyde Park is Speaker's Corner. It started in 1867 as a permanent place for the working class to complain about the world. It's become a traditional site for um, sensible public speech and debate every Sunday. I prefer to let my legs to the carpet so I won't speak for long. What are you going talking despite your attempts to stop me? Fear me on this, Mr. Timberland. <laughs> Mother f want me to believe in it. Because if you pose it any other way, you're running off into utopian ideas. Why can't you walk down the streets naked? Sir, sacrifice a lamb and uh, take that blood, paint it on your house. I'm a better dancer than speaker, just to say this is my message. In the past, speakers such as Karl Marx, Vladimir Lenin and Marcus Garvey frequented the corner. It's vastly entertaining, but can be a little bit too much for some. I'm now in Islington, not far from Essex Road train station, at the old Gainsborough Studios which have been turned into vastly overpriced homes and offices. However, a well-kept secret located within the inner courtyard is a monumental steel sculpture of Alfred Hitchcock's head, which sits like a huge Buddha rising out of the office below it. Hitchcock started his career here in the 1920s, designing the titles for silent movies. By the end of the 1930s, he'd become one of the most famous filmmakers in England. He directed his classic, The Lady Vanishes, here in 1938. Anthony Donaldson's rusting head gazes towards Hollywood, where Hitchcock was to make prolific fame and fortune. We're now near Spitalfields Market in the old Truman Brewery car park. That's a vegetarian burger, and that's an organic chip. They came from this reappropriated London icon, the Rootmaster Restaurant, complete with a kitchen downstairs and tables on the top deck. The Rootmasters were introduced to London in 1954 and phased out in 2005 in favour of the Bendy buses, which should be phased out because they're just too long and dangerous for London roads. However, London Transport are still running two Rootmaster Heritage routes. The first, number nine, departs from near the Albert Hall, and en route you'll see Harrods, Hyde Park Corner, Piccadilly Circus, and Trafalgar Square, before stopping at the Aldwych. 
where you can continue your journey on the number 15. You'll pass St Paul's, Fleet Street, London Bridge, Monument, ending up at the Tower of London, right by Tower Bridge. The best thing about the Route Master is being able to chase it down the street and jump on and off while it's still moving. Warning, jumping on and off a moving vehicle is rather dangerous, please do not attempt to copy. We're in Hampstead Heath right by the train station and outside one of the most infamous pubs in London, the Magdala. This is the spot where Ruth Ellis shot and murdered her estranged lover, David Blakely, on Easter Sunday 1955. If you look at the wall just here you can see two holes where bullets apparently ricocheted off. Her admission of guilt in court led her to the gallows on the 13th of July 1955 and she was the last woman to be executed in Britain. However, on the day I filmed here, a local drinker came over and secretly told me that Ruth actually shot David here across the street and the bullet holes were probably just good for business. I'm now walking down Tottenham Court Road. Around London there are an odd collection of fortified buildings that seem to have no purpose. Like this one in Belsize Park, Camden, Stockwell, Clapham North, Clapham Common and Clapham South. They are in fact the entrances to deep level air raid shelters and are left over from the Second World War. This one here has a particularly interesting history as during the Second World War it was equipped as General Eisenhower's underground UK headquarters. Just here above the door it reads the Eisenhower Centre. All of these bunkers have two entrances. Here's the second entrance to the Good Street Bunker, about 200 metres away on Tottenham Court Road. I'm now down by the Mall again and close to Admiralty Arch. In the 30s that corner building on the right was the German Embassy and home to the Third Reich. The tall statue on the left is of the Duke of York, but I'm not here to see him. In between the Duke and the Embassy is the only Nazi memorial in London. It's the gravestone of the German ambassador's dog Gyro, who died in 1934 from an accidental execution. Gyro was given a full military burial. The small tombstone has the German epitaph, Gyro and Troyer Begleiter, which means Gyro, a true companion. There's a bit of a smell of urine and it's definitely not me. I'm travelling to the roof of a multi-storey car park in the heart of Peckham. On the 10th floor is something rather unexpected and a little bit difficult to find if you've never been here before as there are no signs and the lifts stop on the 6th floor. It's Frank's pop-up cafe and Campari bar. There's a well-stocked bar, relaxed atmosphere and there's also a tasty grill. Beer please! As well as a bar on a car park, the 10th and the 9th floor are also used as an exhibition space for thought-provoking alternative art. This bar is only open in the summer between the 30th of June and the 30th of September. On a clear night, it's a great place to have a glass of something nice with friends and watch the sunset over London. And if you spend the night at a bar, cycling probably isn't the best way to get home. Oh, 